Good evening, folks. It's Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project at 10.37 p.m. Saturday night, September 23rd, 2017. I wanted to do a video concerning how well the media is covering climate change and ways that they are obfuscating the truth. And I want to give you some facts and some data that you can double check and check for yourself and see what's actually happening on our planet. I'm actually showing you the real live current temperatures on in North America. You can see this huge cold weather trough here penetrating in the western portion of the nation, almost separating summer at 80 from winter at 40 by just a few hundred miles. Now this cold trough has dropped down into where I live here. And today when I woke up and I looked in the mountains, there was snow. This is right outside my door right here. And I went <laughs> to verify on several sources. It had snowed down here the day after summer ended. And then I went to check on how rare this is. And for the entire record from 1906 to 1998, it has only snowed one inch in September. And we got several up in the mountains and more is predicted. Snow is predicted throughout the week up at Wolf Creek. And if I just take you here to open snow, you could see the predictions of the, for this week. 51 models, which say 14 inches. This is in Colorado, Bertude Pass, five inches. So the name of the game is slow moving storms. Expect snow near and above tree line for the mountains with four to eight inches likely by Tuesday and perhaps a foot or more in the southern mountains. Where I am, a foot or more here <laughs> where it only snows an inch historically over the last hundred years. Okay, those are the facts. Now what's up with all this? Here it is. Here's the data. This is the winter data for snow, December, January, February, in North, the Northern Hemisphere from 1989 to 2010. I see an upward trend. Now this is how, one of the ways the media obfuscates the truth. This is the Baltimore, Washington International Seasonal Total Snowfall. And they have a trend line in here, but they don't explain it or what it means. But I'm a scientist, and if you start from here, in uh, 1953 to present, there's an, a massive trend upwards. I don't know what this purple line is representing except a lie. I'm going to give you more of the details and how they obfuscate from the truth here. Here's the northern hemisphere snow cover extent since 1967. See the downward trend? It's in June. That's not when it snows in the Northern Hemisphere. If you look at the data for the winter of the Northern Hemisphere, there's an upward trend, especially recently from 2007 on. That's the truth. Check out the Northern Hemisphere autumn snow cover. Here's the five year mean from 75 to present. Boom, straight up. 52 week Northern Hemisphere snow extent from 79 to 2012. Boom, straight up. Winter Northern Hemisphere snow extent, winter, when it snows in millions of square kilometers, went from 45 to 46 from 1967 to present. And if we go from 1995 to present, it would be a difference of 45 to 47. The trend is straight up. For the Southern Hemisphere, there's very limited data in the entire world on the snow extent, but there is empirical data on the sea ice. And I love how all the people are saying where there's ice, we're losing ice. Check out the Arctic ice extent for September, 2017, and it is greater than it was in the seventies. In 1971, when I was born, there was less ice 47 years ago than today in the Arctic. Now let's talk about the Antarctic. The South Southern Hemisphere sea ice anomaly from 1979 to 20, 2008. Look at the ice gain we've had. This is the most ice ever recorded in the Antarctica ever in history. And you can check my sources. I'll have links to everything that I've post showed you in this video at the bottom. And it gets better because just recently 
The 97% com consensus scientist just admitted in this paper in Nature Geoscience that they're wrong. Their models were grossly overestimated and wrong. And if you come down here and look at some of these graphs, what they're now predicting, this is the red line straight up, is that it's dropping off. The prediction now is there is no temperature rise. That's pretty amazing. And if we just go back into the historical past, I'll link you to this graph. This shows you the last 4,000 years, and it shows you clearly in the Minoan period that it was warmer than it was today. And it shows, clears you, shows you clearly in the Roman warm, just 2,000 years ago, it was warmer than it is today. There was also a similar warm in the medieval and in the dark ages here. There is, it has been warmer than it has been today. But the unfortunate fact is, if we look at CMIP6 here, I'm going to link you to this paper, Solar Forcing for CMIP6. This is a new, this is coming right out of the mainstream. This is our current total, total solar irradiance based on sunspots. And if you could see how low we just dipped in the last cycle, it's lower than anything except back to 1900. And the, port, the forecast, the predicted forecast by the mainstream is right here. The end of solar cycle 24, which is in the next two years, is going to drop below a level that we have never seen on this graph prior to 1850 and continue to commence a downward spiral into the grand solar minimum. I'll leave you with some more data. I recently made this graph. It's a really good depiction on how you can manipulate the data. Climate cycles can be interpreted in many ways. This is the actual temperature anomaly since 1860. I've delineated it into periods of global warming and global cooling. And they're on a periodicity here of about 30 years. And you can see exactly where we are right now. We're at the baseline for global temperature deviation of the last 140 years. There has been very limited warning, warming. Here's all your global warming from 1920 straight up. Here's the global warming alarmist period from 1979 to present. Oh my God, it went up 0.4 degrees. And we're about to go straight down over the next several decades. We're going to drop off a trough. And this comes right from the Had Crew data, which I just shut off, unfortunately. <coughs> but it has to do with the total solar irradiance and the solar cycles. It was cold when we had a very low solar cycle period and high cosmic flux. Yesterday's videos was on cosmic flux and cosmic rays and how they and cloud nucleation and how that causes the albedo to rise and global cooling and this is right where we are. We're about to go into solar cycle 25 which will match the Dalton minimum or the Maunder minimum and we will drop off the chart here in total, total solar irradiance moving forward. <clears throat> and these predictions are not vague or obscure. They're coming right from the new papers. This is cutting edge science. So the mainstream is currently saying exactly what I'm saying. And dozens of others have been saying for years. Prepare yourself for food shortages. And worse. We're talking global unrest here, folks, in the next few years. As these cycles continue to drop and starvation occurs globally, you need to be prepared. Uh, tonight I had an interview with the Ice Age Farmer and we discussed resilience moving into the Grand Solar Minimum here and what you need to do to prepare yourself. And I told him that proper planning prevents piss poor performance. So if you want to be prepared, you should start get, re get ready now for what will happen. It's happened again and again and again and again. And if we don't learn from history, History will repeat itself, folks. I hope you got something out of the video. If you like what you see, you like what you saw or heard, please subscribe to our channel and share this with like-minded individuals. It's time for people to get the truth. Have a great evening, everyone.